take this halter off and uh, and uh, let's go ahead and put the bridle on. You don't have to take the halter off. I mean, there's there'd be nothing wrong at all with leaving that that halter on and just tying it up to your saddle so that when you get somewhere wherever you're going, you you can just take it off. Uh, you know, most of the time it's better to take it off. I I like to. Uh, to just simply slip it off their nose and tie it around their neck. That's a lot better than having to holler for people to come help you catch your horse out in the middle of the parking lot. So it, it's pretty embarrassing when your horse gets away, but this <laughs> this will save you a lot of, a lot of trouble. And then when it comes to the actual bridling, uh, to me there's a, there's a, a process that, that if you follow it, we'll, we'll keep it from being a big ordeal. The first thing I want to do is get my horse to, to put his nose through the head stall like that. And I'm not even thinking about putting the bit in his mouth right now. And if you notice that I've got my left hand above his eye over here, his left eye, now I'm simply going to replace my left hand with my right hand. And then I'm going to, I'm going to come down and catch this bit and hold that bit in my fingers and then place my thumb in the corner of his mouth and wait for him to start licking my thumb and then as he's licking my thumb I just pick that bit up in his mouth then I'm going to be real careful of that eye the, the left eye and I'm going to bring this left ear forward and place that head stall over it and then I'm going to lift it out around his right eye and bring that right ear forward and put it in the, in the ear keeper then I'll then I'll make my adjustments and see this this head stall is a little bit long for this horse right here, so I'm gonna shorten it up a notch. Okay, and just play with with that your particular horse and see where he likes to carry the bit better. If he likes it up tight against him, we'll put it up tight. If he likes it hanging a little looser, we'll give him a chance to see if that's all right. There's no, um, nothing set in any textbook that says you have to do it this way. <laughs> it might be, but I, I find that these horses don't, haven't read too many textbooks and, and they'll, each one of them be a little bit different. They'll like things a little differently. So, now that I've got the, bridle on I'm gonna just put the the off rein up over his neck and then I'll, I'll check the saddle and and make sure the saddle's tight and uh, okay If you've ever had a saddle slip on you once you've gotten on, you'll you'll remind yourself to tighten that saddle up before you get on. So now that that we've we've gotten uh, the saddle tightened, we've got the bridle on. A few years ago, I I I got to get a brand new hip, and I and I found that. This tool right here is the best tool I have in the barn, and uh, I can get on him from the ground now. But what I what I taught myself through the process of going where I needed this thing all the time is the value of it. The value of having a horse where they they I call it come pick you up. And you, how many of us have been out places where we got off and <laughs> and we couldn't get back on our horse because it was just too tall. So there, there are trees or ditches or something, and, and we need to have our horse be able to come over and pick us up no matter where we are, side of your trailer, off the fence. My horses get for them when they see me crawl up on the fence, they'll start coming over to, to pick me up. So I'll, I'll get up here, and and then I'm on, I want him to come over here and come over here and you see that was a, a practical um, demonstration of how to use the groundwork that we did a little while ago so that was a, a just coming over to me and that, then he needs to stand there 
and wait for me to get on. And he started to move before I asked him to, to move. So I'm, I'm gonna just slightly bring my legs against him and ask him to wait. I feel like that, that uh, the mounting process should be uh, quiet, should be uneventful, and should be safe. So that's why I teach my horses to come up to the mounting block like that. Now, once I get on, my thoughts go to uh, my posture, and uh, and I just I just kind of really thought about this, and uh, you know I, I don't know about you all, but I like those John Wayne movies. And, and you watch True Grit, and there's old John Wayne, he's sitting up there. And, it, and perhaps John wasn't the best horseman in the world, but he was a great actor. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know this personally, but I bet you that John Wayne saw the true vaqueros of the West. And I bet you that he was doing his best to imitate how they looked. And that's why he had that upright posture. Now there's some practical benefits that come from having that, what I call the John Wayne posture. And if you think of your upper body as if it is a, an outboard motor on your fishing boat. And if you've got that thing tipped up into the boat and the, and the, and the, pr the propeller is out of the water, you can mash on the gas all you want, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to whiz out there in the air. Well, the horse going along with his, with his head too low, looking at the ground, and, and the rider leaning up over the saddle, we don't have anything to get forward motion from. But when I sat up and I assumed my John Wayne posture, and I'm looking out across the horizon, and I'm sitting straight up, now all of a sudden my seat bone's engaging in, on top of this saddle. <laughs> and I've got a seat bone on each side of his spine. So that when I when I ask him to go forward, that horse just just goes forward. And I'm just sitting up there on top of him, straight up and down, my eyesight looking out. I have to remind myself of this all the time because any of us that get to riding by ourselves too much, we'll tend to do this. We'll get to looking at the top of our horse's head and and we we tend to lean forward when we're looking down at our horse's head whereas if if i'm setting up and looking out my eyesight is out i've got a lot better chance of communicating with my horse if i'm in this posture that's why that i think it's so important that that we sit and and have our eyesight out in the distance in front of us now here's how here's how it relates and you'll be able to relate to this right away when you drive your car <laughs> do you look at the hood of the car no you look out down the road and because you're looking out down the road you see red lights and you see brake light whatever it is half mile down the road you simply let off of the gas of the car maybe if you need to put the brake on and it's a non-event but if you're driving along looking at the hood of your car or looking at your phone and you wake up like this and there's a brake light right there in front of you but that car's already stopped and you don't have enough distance to get stopped, now you're gonna crash. So if, if I'm looking at my horse like this and if I'm, if I'm going along up there with my, my head like this and I'm out on the trail ride like this and all of a sudden a rabbit gets up here, I'm on the ground right here before I knew what happened because my horse just simply moved from the rabbit jumping up. But if I'm looking out and I'm, and I'm going, you know, going along, you know, what? When you ever thought about this? When you're, when you're watching a rodeo and it's time for the saddle bronx or the bareback horses, where are those guys' heads at when they come out of that chute? They're laying back there on the, on the tail. <laughs> why do you think they get back there like that? So they can stay on that horse, that's why. It, it's, not just a, it's not just a game, but if, if we're leaning forward, we're vulnerable. Our, our center of gravity is, is too far forward. All the horse has to do is move a little bit and we find ourselves off of the horse. And also with this with this John Wayne posture, when I want to turn, I'll simply look and see my my right shoulder get behind my left shoulder, and everything in me is telling this horse to turn right. 
when I want to straighten up, I'll just straighten up and see him go straight. When I want to turn to the left, my left shoulder gets behind my my right one and everything in me is telling this horse to turn. So the clear communication that takes place by having that John Wayne posture setting on your seat bones and and if you focus your attention on your upper body and what it's doing you're going to be very pleasantly surprised maybe you already know this but you might be surprised of how well and how attentive your horse is to that it just makes sense right away you don't have to teach a horse that when he feels when he feels you come off over here like this he goes over there like that so he's he's ready you know to make that turn he's ready to go straight He's, he's just ready because you're communicating with him in a way that makes sense. So, anyway, I, I, you know, just some simple techniques that I, I think will, will help you out quite a bit. So, I hope you enjoyed that.